call on Paul O'Connor. Chair, conference, comrades, Paul O'Connor on behalf of the National Executive Committee to move motion A24. Comrades, on the 7th of September 2020, a man named Cavan Medlock walked into the office of Duncan Lewis solicitors in Harrow armed with a combat knife, handcuffs, a Confederate flag and a Nazi flag. He hailed relentless racial abuse at the staff and said he was there to kill a solicitor, Tofi Hussein. When challenged as to his motives by the brave staff who confronted him, he said, you've been helping these rats come to this country and Hitler was right. This is the reality of life for those who stick their necks on the line day in, day out, to protect refugees in this country. Tofu Hussein and his team at Duncan Lewis don't just fight injustice in the courts. They do it day in, day out. They are serious anti-fascist fighters who put their necks on the line to do what is right. And I'm extremely proud of the work that they've done on behalf of PCS, defeating the government on the pushbacks policy in the channel, the disgraceful conditions at the Manston holding facility, and most recently on the government's Rwanda policy. And I'm pleased to say that there's representatives of Duncan Lewis in the hall today, alongside our comrades in Care for Calais, and at that conference to show your appreciation for the work they've done on our behalf. <laughs> comrades, the judgment handed down by the Supreme Court on the 15th of November 2023 has both far-reaching legal and political implications. It confirms that there is a raft of domestic and international legislation to which the UK is a signatory that protects refugees from refoulement or refoulement, as a scouse has called it before we had a posh High Court judge pronounce it properly. This is the principle that defends refugees from being deported by one country to a country from which they have fled their initial persecution. And the Supreme Court confirmed beyond doubt that refugees deported to Rwanda would be at serious risk of refoulement. And the court was also clear that this protection derived from a whole range of international conventions, given lie to the claim from the political right in this country that withdrawal from the European Convention on Human Rights would somehow enable them to take a much more draconian line on asylum. The litigation that we've pursued so far has achieved its objectives. Firstly, it's protected our members in the Home Office who've taken a courageous stand against their own employer and they have not been forced to implement these inhumane policies. And most importantly of all, we protected refugees who would otherwise have been the subject to this humanity. And I'd like to pay tribute to the reps and the members in the PCS Home Office group who have taken that courageous stand against their own employer and stopped this policy in its tracks. <laughs> but I'm afraid the fight is far from over. It doesn't end with the judgments of the Supreme Court, although it obviously should. The government has now attempted to legislate that judgment out of existence by passing its so-called Safety of Rwanda Bill. It will no doubt attempt to force a flight through before the next general election in the hope that the politics of hatred that they so carefully foster will mask their catastrophic failings on the living standards of people in this country. PCS once again, in conjunction with our comrades at Duncan Lewis and Care for Calais, have been scrutinising the bill as it's passed through Parliament and we're ready to proceed with further litigation if necessary, if they attempt to get such a flight off the ground. Our efforts to date have frustrated the Tories in their attempts to play one electoral card they have left. They'll stop at nothing to play it, and we must do all we can to ensure that they don't, so that when the general election comes, we not just confine the Rwanda policy to the dustbin of history, but we also send this rancid Tory administration the same way. Support the motion. <laughs> 